Hi everyone, my name is Pastor Michael Linderman. I'm the pastor of the Lutheran Church of the Redeemer in Ramsey, New Jersey, and vice pastor of Calvary Lutheran Church in Allendale, New Jersey. It's May 1st, 2020. Hard to believe that we are already into May uh, and still in our uh, situation dealing with the coronavirus and uh, the restrictions on life as we used to know it. Um, but in this time, it's a, um, this time of challenge, I've had the opportunity to think about things that um, I want to share with you and just reflect uh, so that we can learn from uh, these opportunities uh, and learn from our experience about God's will for us and the way that Christ is with us in our experiences. And that's what I want to talk about today. I heard a sermon a few weeks ago online, uh, very well done in, in many ways, but the, 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 the kind of germ of the, of the sermon, the gist of the sermon was that this pastor had been on a trip to uh, the Holy Land in uh, Israel and had visited the, uh, the, the Church of St. Peter in Galicantu, which is uh, just outside the old city of Jerusalem. And that place is uh, believed to be where Caiaphas's palace, Caiaphas was the high priest at the time of Jesus' crucifixion, um, that that's the, that church commemorates uh, that space and that place where Jesus was taken and also the place where Peter uh, rejected Christ three times. And there's even a bronze statue outside the church that uh, memorializes that uh, event. And uh, this pastor started out his sermon by saying that that offended him, and he, it made him very angry um, because he didn't want the church to be memorializing Peter's failure, um, but rather that we should concentrate and see and glorify God and, and, and the success of Christ's resurrection, and then the success of Peter's life as a Christian that came after that. Um, so... He reviewed all of Peter's accomplishments after Easter in his career as a Christian apostle. And at the end, he said this uh, troubling phrase to me, that God is waiting on the other side of failure. In other words, your failure, uh, your experience of failure, God is waiting for you on the other side of that, waiting for you in victory. And that is not our theology. Um, we... we we need to be careful about um, using human mm, values of success and failure in our theology. Uh, we would say, rather, that Christ is with you when you experience failure, when you suffer, uh, when you experience defeat, um, because we believe Christ must be there with you in those realities so that we don't always look to uh, to see Christ in human success or in our victories, because we can miss God, and God uh, doesn't necessarily want to be recognized in those places. God chooses rather to be recognizable in the thing that is most contradictory to what we expect, and that is uh, called the theology of the cross. Um, where is God? Um, many people would say, well, God certainly isn't wasn't with Jesus in the cross. The whole idea was that Jesus was forsaken. And yet our faith says that's where God was most powerfully, with Christ through his uh, crucifixion, his suffering before that, his suffering unto death, and his uh, betrayal and rejection by everybody, and that God was with Christ through all of that and in the resurrection, of course, in, at Easter. So, um, we want to be able to see Christ in solidarity with those who have failed in the world's eyes or those who have been defeated in the world's eyes, those who are poor and suffering. Uh, Christ is with them. And that's, a, that's not visible to the human eye. That's not something that we understand logically. It is something that we confess in faith because Christ has led us to that point, led us in that direction and um, asked us to see himself in solidarity with those who have, been, uh, who have been defeated in the world's eyes, who have been rejected in the world's eyes, who um, have been uh, cast off in the world's eyes. 
so that Christ may be seen there and in their redemption in the end. Um, Christ is present with those in those kinds of experiences so that we can say and hope he was always with us uh, and um, we, he will redeem us when his victory is fully manifest. So we hang on in hope knowing that uh, not just that Christ waits for us on the other side of this pandemic, for example, or our suffering uh, through this uh, period, uh, especially for those who are suffering directly because of the virus and its effects um, on their family, on their health, on their, on their, um, on their local community. But Christ is with us now in our suffering, in this experience, in our loss, in our grief, in our despair. Christ is with us. And uh, let us therefore work to lessen the suffering of others uh, because of that hope, because of that faith, that Christ um, being seen to be in solidarity with those people, we also join in solidarity with those who are poor, who are suffering, uh, who have been cast off by the, uh, in, in the eyes of the world and seen to be those who are just losers. Uh, no, we, we rather um, insist on being in solidarity with those people because Christ has led us there through his own suffering and death and the resurrection. To God be the glory. That's what we hope for. That's what we pray for. And that's what we believe.